Okay, so step one, always input. Over here, step two, your process part, and then step three, output. Okay, I always mention this many couple times because this is the basis of writing programs. So that's what we're gonna do the first step. And let me just add some lines in here. What do we need for input? Okay, so you're gonna gather all your data for your input. And I highly recommend that you use variables to store your data. Do not try to uh, use numeric literals, if possible at all, unless those numbers are very, very simple, like just counters of, for no meaning at all, then that's fine. But if you look at this, like 65 is a very specific number that is uh, used to represent senior citizens, right? Or 12 is an, another number that represents children. So you don't want to say if age is equal to number 12. You want to say something like child age, okay? Or, se or senior age or something like that. So uh, they are more meaningful in your code. So with those information, you would do something like this, maybe like senior age is gonna be 65. And the reason why you use variable is because if you use this variable many times in your code, if you wanna change your senior uh, age to something else, as you can see, some places, some stores, uh, you know, the senior age is actually 55 to get some discounts, right? So it's not always 65. So you, so you make one change here, all, all the places in your code are changed automatically. So that's senior age. You can also do one for a child age. This is 12. And you know anything above 12 and bet between, then it'll be adult age. So in this case, you don't really care, okay? Unless you want to use that again in the code, that's fine. But this, this example, you don't really have to care about the adult age. And so those are pretty, um, very specific to the age. And then you can also have uh, the price thing as, as well. Right, the price, because the price could change. So again, don't use it in your code. I mean, literally, use the variables. You can say senior um, price is equal to $5, and then child price is $3, and then adult price, you have to have one for that as well, it's $4. No, I'm, I'm sure I had it wrong. Senior is $4. Okay, so those are my variables. I will use in my calculation. And then now I need to read the input. Okay, is it says if you have if, if there are still people in the line. Since I'm not reading data from a file or anything, I'm going to mimic that example by using the input statement. So I'm gonna say something like more people is equal to read from the input. Um, maybe very simple, um, more people and then I'll just say yes or no, okay? And then you, if you enter yes, then it's gonna keep processing that, uh, that information. So that would be like, if there are still more people in line, okay? And then here is the loop, right? The process. So we'll do something like again, while more people is what, right? Well, it is true, or well, in this case it would be yes. So. In this example here, again, I'm using the letter Y, right? Not ideal. You could say something over here, the actual character Y or a, another variable to store for Y because if you want to use that again. So in this case, I'll just leave it here. It's fine. It's just a very simple use one time. But I'm using a capital Y, so I want to convert the entire input to the uppercase, right? So it doesn't matter into lowercase uppercase, it's gonna be forced to uppercase. If that is true, that, that means I have more people to process. Okay, so you process, what do you do? And so here the signal value to stop this loop is when the result or the input is an N, right? So signal value is the N because it will cause the value to stop. So then once I inside the loop, then you need to check if, and again, this was a little bit tricky, right? So senior citizens um, who have has a uh, zoo membership gets free gift. That only applies to senior citizens. 
but everybody else who have a Zoom membership gets in free, okay? Including senior citizens who are not a, a, a member, right? So be very careful here. You're gonna have to look here, which is which one should occur first. And I talked about this last week that the order of your if statements is really important in this kind of scenario, because if you don't do it correctly, you're gonna get an incorrect result, because this. So you would measure the membership first before you even calculate all these prices because of this, this part right here, okay? So that means you would wanna check for that membership first, but you need to get the information. So in this case, again, we don't have data. So I'm just gonna get it from the user, from the input, right? So you can say, um, um, member is, I'm gonna read that from the input again. Just say member, and I put here uh, yes, no. I would just say that is yes or no for that uh, for that user or that guest. And then now, once I get the membership information, then I need to read the age. So I can say age is integer, and I get the input. Uh, enter age. I got my two data. So once I have this information, then I can check the membership first, right? So I can do something like if member is equal to again, yes. So again, the same as I did up here, I want to put the upper here, use the uppercase. If they are a member, then the price is free, okay? So when you write this kind of code, don't print right here. Remember output, they're separate, right? Input, you process, output. So what do you do? You have to use a variable to store the price. So you do something like this, price equals uh, zero, right? Because membership gets zero price. There's no cost for that. And then inside here, while you're a member, this applies to all people who are a member, but the senior citizens have a special gift. So then inside the if block, you have to also check for their age, right? So if age is greater or equal to senior age, if that is true, then they get a message, right? Again, don't print it here you use a variable, something like a message. You receive um, a free gift, I think something like that, right? Otherwise, that's it. They only get a free price, okay? And then here is the else part. If you are not a member, right? But that you have the other branch. If they're not members, then this is where you calculate their actual price. So you do it again. If your age is um, less than or equal to the child age, then the price is equal to the child price. Okay. And then else, if your age is greater or equal to senior age, Oops. Then price is equal to senior price. And then here's the else part, right? Else it must be a parent, I mean an adult. Okay, so you get all this information here and then you need to print each message to uh, the user. Uh, I have an error here. Um, adult price, oh, I don't have it. Uh, I thought I do. Oh, I misspelled. Okay, so we got this information. And then finally, right, before we move on to the next person, we want to print the information. So the step three is actually output, but it's inside the while loop. So you output here, you can print the total here, say um, your price is, and then you put here, 
the price. And for formatting purposes, you can put here the dollar sign for dollar sign. Uh, you use this uh, percent dot 2f for two decimal places using a float, okay? And then percent outside the uh, quote, and then the name of this price is just called price. And formatting that to the price. But you also want to print the, uh, the message if, the, if you are a, a senior. So how do you print this message, right? You, you can't just print it. If you print, you can get an error because it's not defined outside here. So if you go to else part and this never run, message is never used. If I try to print message down here, it's gonna fail. So if I do this, right, it's gonna fail. You're gonna have an error. Okay, so what you do then, okay, since I'm using a message, then it's also wise to go up here and set your message to blank. Or in this case, uh, you could put like um, a none. Okay, none or blank, it doesn't matter. And then you also want to set the price, okay, um, to zero. So you reset for every individual person, you reset the message, you reset the price to zero, and then get the information and you process it, then print that information for that user. You repeat for the next person if there's any. And then finally, we need to update, and we're going to update this, this part here, right? So again, this needs to go down here again in the bottom of your code. This is the update part. Okay. If you don't update, it's going to cause an infinite loop. So here we go. Let's give it a try and see if it works. And uh, over here. So if I say more people, okay, if I said no, then it ends, right? Because we exit out the loop and I did not put any message out here. So uh, nothing's shown there, but you could say, thank you for playing, whatever, right? Or thank you for visiting. But let's run it again. This time I'm gonna go yes. I say yes. Notice I put a lowercase y, it's fine, right? Then in my member, this is the next question right here. And if I put no, then it's going to ask for my age and let's put uh, five. So I'm expected to get the child price, which is three uh, $4 or $3. Yeah. And the message here says none, like there's no message. It, it prints it anyway, because I set to, to be none. So you should print nothing there, right? If it's a, if it's not a senior uh, who has membership. So again, I repeat again, and notice I keep going until I reach an N. So if I go yes again, and this time I'm gonna put a, a senior. So I'll say uh, uh, a member, yes. I'm a senior, let's say I'm put 70 years old. And there it is, the price is free. I get a free gift for senior only. Okay, member again. Okay, yes. This time I'm a member, I am an adult and I get the price in free, I get none for the message. So in this case, the message is displayed every time. If you don't want to display that message, then you have to do an if statement to check it, right? And then if I, if I go no, then I'm done over here. Okay, so if you don't show this message, you can check the state of the message variable here. If message is not equal to none, then print the message. Otherwise, don't print it because the only way is not and none is if you go to this line, right? So you can say if message um, is uh, is measure is not equal to none, then only then you're going to print the message. Otherwise, don't print it. Okay. So let's see if um, that works. So people, yes, uh, member, uh, no. And then I enter five. And then you see there's no more messages to print. If I go yes, and I'm a senior. And then, oops, that's incorrect. That's gonna be an error. 
okay because i did not validate that correctly so remember yes age is 70 and then there it is i got a free gift because the text has been set and now again to exit out all right so this is how you would translate that pseudocode to the flowchart to the actual code